All right, welcome back. Uh, so we are gonna dive in. <laughs> so setup is great and super duper fun, uh, but actually doing stuff is where is where the magic happens. Uh, so this is Zapwork Studio. Hopefully you've uh, installed it. Uh, you've got it open to this page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, a new project together and then we're gonna integrate it into our hunt. In this video, we're gonna keep it as simple as we can keep it simple. Uh, it's just gonna kind of be like a hello world type thing. Uh, and we're just gonna see that we can get it set up. Uh, so go ahead and click on new project. Uh, what I choose to call mine is red pill, blue pill. Uh, and you can feel free to leave spaces and things like that. But for some reason, I've been, been coding for so long that I, I don't like spaces in my name. So red pill, blue pill uh, is the name that I chose. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, when you open Zapwork Studio up, it, it kind of looks like this. It's intimidating at first, um, but it's easy to use. Uh, so the main thing they've got is there's a tree, kind of like a hierarchical tree here uh, that starts with the root node, uh, and then there's a couple scripts in here. Uh, so the way Zapwork Studio works is you can kind of use like visual things to kind of set up your view, but then you can also add some code. Uh, the code is all in JavaScript, uh, so if you're a web developer, you're going to take to this stuff just great. Um, and technically, it's what's called TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript, which lets you do some more things. Um, and then there's an area here for properties. Uh, so all of your different objects have properties you can set. Uh, there's an area down here called controllers, uh, which we'll get to that much later. Uh, and then there's kind of an area that changes in here. Sometimes it's timeline, sometimes it's other things. Uh, and then over on the right side are uh, your media assets. So the media assets uh, that we care about is really just this top area. To be honest, these bottom areas, this undo history uh, and symbol definitions, we're not going to use, not going to use those at all. So just the media library is all we want here. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to start dropping things onto uh, the root node. Uh, one thing that you can do uh, to start with is you can say new script. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new blank script. Um, and so this script is typically something I make right to start with. Uh, and what I do is I call it my main script. Another thing that I do uh, whenever I'm using the Zapper plus ClueKeeper library, just whenever I'm doing my initial setup, is I make a, another script uh, called ClueKeeper. So I'd say new script uh, blank. Uh, and then this one I'm going to rename uh, to be called uh, ClueKeeper. The name ClueKeeper for this script is actually important. Uh, as soon as we get into using the, the Zapper plus ClueKeeper library, uh, that will be important. But whenever I start up a new file, those it's just like a knee-jerk reaction to make those two things first. But what I really want to do um, is make a Hello World example. Um, and to make a Hello World, I just need text to show up on the screen. Um, so I have to decide where do I want to put this text, what font do I want this text to be in, how do I set up text. And the way this works is you click on the plus button uh, and then you find fonts and you find Roboto. So you have to add um, a font is, is just like an image as far as Zapwork Studio is concerned. Um, you have to add it into your assets, like your media library. So I'm going to say, uh, hey, give me a Roboto. Um, and so now that's something that I can use in my, in my app here. And what I want to do is I want to drag Roboto somewhere over to my tree. Instead of just dragging it over and dropping on the root node, uh, what I like to do is I like to make a new group. Um, and this group, let's go ahead and do it, then I'll talk more about it. I'm going to call this one uh, Portrait Center. And so this group is going to be in the middle of the screen, uh, and it's going to be oriented in portrait. Zapwork Studio is actually set up for a landscape by default, but ClueKeeper, the app, is all portrait. So everything I do is in, is in portrait. In order to make it portrait center, um, what that means is it's going to be in the middle of the screen and it's going to be, be upright. There's one thing you have to change. So portrait center, uh, we're going to need to find where it says um, position, scale, rotation, and we're going to have to rotate it 90 degrees uh, to make it actually portrait. So now anything that I put um, into this group is going to automatically be in portrait mode, which is great. So I'm going to take my Roboto uh, font here, and I'm going to drop it onto Portrait Center. Now you may say, hey, that looks like it showed up sideways. Um, but that's just because I'm, I'm viewing it in landscape. So let me go ahead and view it in Portrait. There we go. <laughs> my, my button for Portrait didn't show up initially. My, my screen was too small before. Uh, so if I yeah, it just kind of hit on me there. Um, so if you view something in Portrait, it'll show you the, the screen as if it's in Portrait. 
uh, which you can see has black bars, however big they need to be. Um, and so now what we want to do with this text is we want this text to be the hello world text. What I'm going to optionally choose to do is I'm going to choose to right click on the, uh, the node here and I'm going to rename it to hello world. That is completely optional. I just, I like to name the things in my tree. It just keeps them more organized. And now what we want to do is we want to set some attributes on it. Uh, obviously one piece of attribute that we'd like to set is we'd like to set the text attribute uh, and we'd like for it to say hello world. Uh, so there it says hello world. The other thing that I choose to do whenever I work with text is I always do the same thing. I set it to be wrap. That's the first thing I do. I set my font size by saying how many lines there are. Uh, so for example, if I wanted a, a fairly big font, I'd say 10 lines. If I wanted a smaller line, I'd say 20 lines. Now you're like, why, why do you use lines to set the font? Um, I've played with a lot of different options. This, this one turns out to work the way that's closest to how I, I like it. Um, and it just works well. So it's kind of like inverse of font size. Um, and then I always center center. Now, to be honest, I wish that those were the defaults for all text, uh, wrap, uh, and then number of lines. Um, I typically think of 20 for small text uh, and 10 for large text or, or anywhere in between. Uh, and then center center. And then I don't touch a lot of the other options. So it says hello world uh, and we're doing good there. And that's actually the, the end of the zap that we're making this time, which I know is kind of funny. Um, and we're gonna publish it, right? So we've got uh, one thing here, hello world, it's showing up Portrait Center. Uh, and if I click publish, uh, it'll have me sign in. You're gonna wanna sign in, of course, the same way you signed in on the website. Uh, so for me, that was login with Google. Uh, and then once you're signed in, what it'll do is it'll show you uh, your zap. So I've got a red pill, blue pill right here, which has never been used. Uh, you'll notice that I did the prep for it a while back, but you can ignore that one. So red pill, blue pill, uh, I want to choose selected. Uh, and I want to publish this guy. So it's the world's least exciting zap. Uh, it just says hello world. Uh, but now I'm ready to go over to Clue Keeper. Uh, so it's published, which is great. Uh, I don't really need the zap code at all. Uh, I'm just going to head over to Clue Keeper. Uh, so now I'm going to come back into my hunt here. So find uh, where I was at again. So I've got to go into that clue, and I want to go into the content for that clue. Uh, so there are the clues up, uh, and then here the content is up. And what I want to do is I, of course, want to enable uh, Zapper. Um, the button uh, for a Zap says Scan by default. Uh, you can change it here if you want to change it. Go right ahead. Uh, preload the Zap code. This is something you pretty much always want to do. Um, and so we're going to preload our red pill, blue pill. And then depending on whether you, you want to or not, uh, you can show the hide, show or, or hide the solve button. Right now, we have no way to solve it from within the zap, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the solve button on there, right? Um, and I'll just say save and continue here. Uh, so now it's in there, uh, you know, the, the, the solution uh, isn't set yet. I can set the solution, I guess, to hello world. I'll make it all caps because all of our solutions are always all caps. Um, so now we're ready to try it out. Uh, so the fun thing is with, uh, with Clue Keeper, uh, this thing should just kind of live update. Um, I've obviously finished the hunt already, so I've got to reset it. Uh, so you just click on the options menu and then reset hunt. Whenever you're doing development for your own hunt, just expect that you're going to reset it a lot. Right? Um, so it's now been reset. Um, so I start my hunt by hitting go. Um, and then I've got one clue down the rabbit hole. Um, and whenever I click scan, by the way, you'll notice that there is a solve button right now. But whenever I hit scan, what it'll do uh, is it'll just kind of unlock my zap. Um, and then it'll say hello world. Um, and it didn't say hello world. It says unlocking. So something went horribly wrong. Uh, let me go back into ZapWorks. Oh, I know what it is. This is lame. Uh, but it doesn't like empty scripts. Uh, so take off your two empty scripts. Uh, that was a mistake on my part. I should not have done that to you. Uh, by the way, when you get crashes like this uh, that are kind of unexpected, the best way to, to debug the crashes is to um, open it up in uh, ZapWorks, Zapper for Mac. Uh, mine's having trouble launching right now or else I'd show you that. Uh, but let's go try it again. Uh, so we've got it back up again. I took out those two blank scripts. Uh, I just hit back um, and then I hit scan again. Uh, and now it should show the hello world. Uh, cool, there we go, hello world. 
Why it doesn't like blank scripts is beyond me, uh, but you can see that we've successfully made uh, Hello World show up in his app. Now, of course, for this hunt, um, you can't really do anything uh, with Hello World, uh, so you just have to hit the Solve button, uh, and then you can type the solution uh, of Hello World. By be my final, final answer, sure. Cool, so that worked out just fine and dandy. Uh, it was a simple zap. I'll go ahead and reset the hunt here for next time. Uh, but it really didn't do much uh, exciting. Uh, we also kind of learned a valuable lesson that, that sometimes uh, Zapworks Studio, you have, to, you have to give it a little love sometimes, uh, and those blank scripts got us in trouble. Uh, so I won't make that mistake again now. <laughs> All right, that's it for the uh, Hello World. Uh, come back next time, and we'll actually integrate the Zapper Clue Keeper library, and we'll add a little code for you. All right, see you then.